In this section, students focus their attention on how to represent patterns of growth and decay as functions. The six lessons in section B form the core of student understanding about exponential functions. Here students begin to employ the notation and terminology of functions. For example, dependent and independent variables. They study graphs of exponential functions in terms of both real world and abstract contexts. And it's here where they begin observing the effect of different values of a and b and how they impact the graph represented by f of x is equal to a times b to the x power. So to summarize section b, if you're looking for which lessons in this unit to expand, this is the section in which I would add extra time. These lessons where students identify key characteristics and link them to what they mean in terms of the context are crucial. Let's break it down a little bit. Lesson eight focuses on writing situations using function notation. Then lesson nine starts comparing the function notation to the graphs and the relationships between the equations and the characteristics of the graphs. Lesson 10 applies the concept of rate of change to exponential functions and it uses linear functions as the comparison. Then in lesson 11, we allow students to really investigate. They check out the height of a bouncing ball and how it might be modeled using exponential functions. And finally, in lessons 12 and 13, students explore the effect that changing A and B have on the graphs of exponential functions and on the other features of the graphs. Of special note in this section, are videos that are available to students. And I'm gonna pause here because I would like to suggest pulling out some specific pieces for students to watch and discuss. It's what I would do in class. So for instance, in lesson 5.8.3, there's a really nice explanation for why the growth factor or depreciation factor is not the one third number that students tend to pull out of the problem's wording. In addition, in lesson 5.10.2, the video provides a great visual comparison of the rate of change for something that is linear versus something that is exponential for given periods of time. And then in lesson 5.11.2, if your students are still struggling to understand or see how exponential functions are different from linear functions, the explanation of the table provides specific numeric values as illustration of the inconsistency over time. 